or that butterfly excitement feeling will die out and you will be in a relationship with someone that you actually don't have much in common with and you actually probably don't like because all you saw was that high. So intensity does not mean intimacy. Welcome to the Secret Life Podcast. Tell me your secret. I'll tell you mine. Sometimes you have to go through the darkness to reach the light. That's what I did. After 12 years of recovery in sex and love addiction, I finally found my soulmate, myself. Please join me in my novel, Secret Life of a Hollywood Sex and Love Addict, a four-time bestseller on Amazon. It's a brutal, honest, raw, gnarly ride, but hilarious at the same time. Check it out now on Amazon. Welcome to Secret Life Podcast. I'm Brianne Davis-Gant. Today, I'm pulling back the curtains of all kinds of human secrets. We'll hear about what people are hiding from themselves or others. You know those deep, dark secrets you probably want to take to your grave? Or those lighter, funnier secrets that are just plain embarrassing? Each week, we are going to take a deep dive into one subject, exploring the how, what, when, where, and why of it all. Get ready for a more focused and revealing journey into the human experience. This is a new chapter of Secret Life, and I'm excited for you to join the ride. Today, we are going to talk about dun 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 why people confuse intensity with intimacy. Okay, I love this subject matter. I even wrote about it in Secret Life of a Hollywood Sex and Love Addict, the first book. I have a quote in there that I heard years ago that we confuse intensity with intimacy. And I did this for the longest time. I thought a relationship had to be passionate, like a railroad hitting me, a roller coaster, the drama feeling. It had to like knock me like right really hard. And I had to feel that intensity, the butterflies, the (gasps) overwhelming, the loss of breath, that feeling needed to happen or it didn't feel like anything. And when you're chasing that and you're used to it, and especially when it comes in a trauma toxicity form, which it normally does, it's progressive. So what you thought you needed a long time ago, then over the years, it gets, you need more. It's almost like the the heroin addict needs a sh- bear shot of heroin. The Coke addict needs more lines of Coke. It's the same with love addiction or that intensity. Like our nervous system needs a bigger jolt of it. So with my clients this week, and especially being so close to Valentine's Day just happening, you know, a lot of them are dating. I have right now four, four or five clients that are actively dating, healthy dating. Um, And that's what the second book about is healthy dating. And I used to call it sober dating, but people would be like, sober dating, what? You're not, you're not, you're not sober from alcohol, but sober dating to me is healthy dating where you have boundaries and rules. But one of the main things that I'm dealing with, with these five people and just people in relationships in general, the work I do is they want that intensity feeling, the the movie making feeling, the the romance on television feeling that knock yourself out, knock your your socks off. And and I always say, OK, well, for me, I'll just talk about for me, if you get that feeling or anybody in the program I work with, any of my sponsees or anybody in the actual program, not my clients, because majority of my clients are not in the program. They're not sex and love addicts. They have toxic re- relationships. Some of them should be, but a lot of them is a lot of trauma, inner child work, shadow work, toxic work, um, relationship trauma work. I do a lot of that work and sex and love work, obviously, and sex addiction work and all of that, but in addiction work. But if I'm working with somebody in the actual Sex and Love Addicts Anonymous program, I say, if you feel that intensity when you date them, if you meet somebody and you get that hit, if you get those overwhelming butterflies, 
fucking run. (laughs) Fucking run. That's actually your nervous system being hijacked. That is not uh, intimacy. That is not your soulmate. That is not your twin flame bullshit. I know I've said that before, but that is a run. Run the opposite way. So when I work with someone, and especially these five people that are dating right now, Their nervous systems have been hijacked for a very long time, and it usually started with a parent. So a lot of them have absent fathers, fathers that, you know, were narcissists, fathers that didn't show up for them, a father that passed away, um, or mothers that were very enmeshing, very codependent, you know, smothered them. So it came it came from a parent. So the hijacking of the nervous system, when they go into partnership, they need that intensity feeling again. And if they don't get it, they actually look for someone to recreate it. And so when someone says, I need that intensity feeling, I actually say, that's not healthy for you. That's your nervous system getting fucking hijacked. And I want your nervous system to stay like calm. Because that intensity will go away or it will progressively get worse into trauma and toxicity and the ups and downs. And it will be a bad relationship the longer you're in it. Or that butterfly excitement feeling will die out and you will be in a relationship with someone that you actually don't have much in common with and you actually probably don't like because all you saw was that high. So intensity does not mean intimacy. Intimacy, when I looked up the word intimacy, nowhere in the definition, and I was going to read it to you and I was like, people can look it up. It's a closeness. It's a, it's a safety. It's two people that come together. And I have a whole episode on intimacy, so I'm not going to read the definition, but nowhere in the definition is intensity, passion, none of those words are in there. Because that's not what intimacy is. Into me, into me see, meaning we see each other and we don't hijack each other. So if someone goes on a date, so I'm I'm talking about someone, let me pick somebody I'm working with right now. When she goes on a date, if she keeps it right size, like this is a great person, this is a great guy, they have fun time, and then she leaves the date and she's not upset obsessing about him or wanting to sleep with him right away or losing herself, losing her thoughts about him, wondering when he's going to call. That's healthy. And I was explaining this to her. I said, this is a healthy relationship. You're not losing yourself to the relationship. And he's a whole person and you're a whole person and you guys have each other, your own lives. And then you come together and enjoy each other's company. And there's no enmeshing and no hijacking each other. Yes, you. when you think about him, you think about him fondly. You're attracted to him. You're sexually attracted to him. You want to be with him. But there's no hijacking of nervous systems. So that's how I explained it. And she was like, oh. And it, she said it feels so nice and so safe. But then the other part of her is like, it feels weird. And so that's where if you're not used to it, real intimacy feels weird and almost unsafe because your nervous system is not used to that. So when someone I'm working with is dying for the passionate intensity, my job is to give them skills to calm their nervous system. So one of the things I always give people when I start working with them is putting your face in ice water every morning. That lowers your nervous system immediately in the morning, because when you cool your face down, you actually cool your entire nervous system down. So that would be one thing I would give somebody I work with them. Another situation, I have a client I've worked with for a long time and she is dating. And even though she feels sexual chemistry, it's not the same intensity of the man she dated who was very dangerous. Um, He was an alcoholic, uh, carried a gun, 
uh, <laughs> like screamed at her. They had these intense fights and then makeups and breakups. And this person is very even keeled, asks how she's doing, you know, shows up for her in a healthy way, doesn't over text, doesn't love bomb her and then ignores her. And a part of her is like, what does he want with me? And I said, he likes you. He likes you. And she's like, yeah, but it just feels like very like neutral. Like it doesn't feel like I don't understand. And I said, you're a great person and he likes you and he's not trying to overpower you or literally attack your nervous system to get something from you and to feel a hit for himself. And you're so used to men doing that, that this doesn't feel you don't understand what he wants from you. And he just wants to enjoy you as a human being. So intimacy is two human beings that are equal that are enjoying each other, but not in meshing and not hijacking each other. So if you feel like you are on a date with someone and it's like, oh, I find them attractive, but I'm not getting that knock me over, like drag me to bed. Like, where's this oh, take my breath away feeling? I'm asking you to lean in. I'm asking you not to think of what I used to think of Romeo and Juliet, that person better want to die for me after seeing me on a balcony. This is me in fantasy, obviously. On a balcony, um, just met. He actually has a as a girlfriend and we are underage and blah, blah, blah. All that bullshit of Romeo and Juliet Shakespeare that I've written about in the book. That is crazy talk. That is insanity not okay love at all but that's what I thought it was that you have to be willing to die for someone as soon as you see them it's that intense has to happen and anything less of that I wanted no piece of it don't even come near me unless it's going to knock me over and so if you have the same background that I do where you see love as this all-encompassing even JLo's new movie that you know she says she's a sex addict there's this new movie coming out about her new album and it says we think you're a sex addict and I actually want to scream at it and go no you're a love addict you're a fucking love addict JLo sorry Sorry, when you go from marriage to marriage, listen, I'm one too, so I have no no qualms about it. But it's like, no, you're a sex and love addict. Let's put it really out there that if you're getting married constantly or going from relationship to relationship, that's probably what it is. Or you enjoy toxic love or you're chasing love, right? So if you are one of those people that is looking for that intensity and you're starting to try to date in a healthy way, I am asking you, when you feel that intensity, Try to fucking run the other way. <laughs> Try to go, okay, I've done that intensity before and it has not worked out. That best thinking did not actually help me. So I'm going to turn and go the other way. And I'm going to give this other person that I am attracted to, that I still like find very attractive, that I want to sleep with, that doesn't overwhelm me and take anything from me, but is showing up as a whole person with a whole life. And we just are co connecting as humans to humans and give that person a shot. And I'm telling you, the people you're with that have that intensity, it always fades. Anybody I work with, because I work with a lot of couples, Mark and I actually work with a lot of couples and the intensity they felt at the beginning. And obviously, if they're working with Mark and I, we're the last stop. No one comes to us unless they're having major problems. So when we work with them, I say at the beginning, that was your two trauma children and inner child acting out with each other and not you guys didn't have proper communication skills or how to have healthy relationship. It wasn't mirrored to you by your parents. So you guys intensely got together with your trauma and love bombing and then like done this back and forth, um, push, pull, intense, passionate uh, situation that doesn't last for anyone. Like it doesn't last. 
It's not withstanding. But what what is, is when you have that connection with someone and it's just, it's a lovely connection and you want to be friends with them and you want to lean in and know them more and you find them attractive, that is something to build on. That is real intimacy to build on. And then you can go listen to the past episodes about the five types of intimacy that you build on. So that is the question of the week. Do you confuse intensity for intimacy? And if you do, please, I am begging you to go the other way. If it feels intense, run the other way. You are not doing yourself a favor going, oh, this must be it because you've done that already. So I'm asking you to try the other way, where it's more stable, where it doesn't rob you, where it doesn't take anything from you, where it doesn't take your time, your thinking, where where your nervous system is not robbed and you get to stay in yourself and be a whole person while they are a whole person. So try that this time and see what happens. Okay, thank you for joining me this week. Thank you for listening to Secret Life Podcast. I'd love to know your thoughts on the subject this week or if there's any topic that you want me to talk about and send it to secretlifepodcast at iCloud.com. Until next time. Thanks again for listening to the show. Please subscribe, rate, share, or send me a note at secretlifepodcast.com. And if you like to check out my book, head over to secretlifenovel.com or Amazon to pick up a copy for yourself or someone you love. Thanks again. See you soon.